Hello everyone, my name is Kate Garrow and this is Lee Holter. I'm Lee Holter. We're with Napier ERA. We are here to do our ERA Pro Performance presentation and it is August 4th, 2017. Right now I'm going to go over a listing package with my potential client. Let's hope she says yes. Yes, maybe so. <laughs> you never know. Hi, my name is Kate Garrett. Hi, nice to meet how are you? you? I'm Lee. So nice to meet you today. Do you mind if we have a seat at the kitchen table? That would be awesome. I'd love to do that. Can I get you some water? No, but I appreciate it. Thank you, though. Oh, glad to do it. Let me know if you need it. I will. So first, I'd just like to explain a little bit about our approach and then my agenda for how I like to go through our process. Okay, I would like that. Wonderful. So I've got just a few steps here. Um, first, I like to talk about how I work and understanding your situation. Then I like to go into my marketing approach and our plan. Then I will preview our home. And then I like to determine where we're thinking about for market value. And then from there, I like to make sure we can make a mutual decision. Does that sound like something you feel like you I, can I think I'd like to because I really would like to kind of think about what my goals are and how quickly I would like this to happen. Wonderful. And those are things that we can address both while we're in the, the process, but also if you just have a question, just feel free to jump Perfect. in. Perfect. That's great. Excellent. Okay. So that's our agenda. Let's move through. And I told you that the first thing I really want to talk about is kind of what's going on in our market and the key influences here. So we have a few things that we can control and things that we cannot control, right? So some of the things we cannot control are our location, uh -huh. right? Or our um, exposure to the market. The exposure is what I do for you. Okay. And that's, that's the marketing where I really want you to spend a whole lot of money, right? Yeah, well, that's the whole thing of where we use what our experience is and what works best in our market to get you out to as many eyeballs as possible. So you're saying that what I really think happens is maybe not quite as important as your knowledge of the market is, and so you can pinpoint how to market my house best to get to the buyers who are most likely to buy it. Yeah, absolutely, and that's really a key distinction. It's not just about shotgunning everything. Sometimes we need to actually make some kind of targeted decisions. Okay, I like that. So there's some parts of this that we control not all the pieces of, such as the condition, the terms, and the price. That's, the condition's kind of my job. That is kind of your job. The terms are something that we get from other people and that we can also insert. And the price is what we will come up with a mutually agreed upon decision. Okay. When we get to that point. So let me talk about, um, as I've already shared with you, exposure is an important element in the sale of your home. Right? So the more exposure, that just simply means the more eyeballs are on mm -hmm. your listing. So when we look at how our market works, we have a breakdown here. We have yard signs. We have the agent, which is me, the internet, TV, references, and print. So as you can tell from our presentation right here, the vast majority is coming from the internet and the agent. Well, I know I always go to the internet. I'm on Zillow all the time trying to figure out what's going on with my house and, you know, and my you're neighbors. Not, you're not unusual. That's really how most people start. Whether it's Zillow or another vehicle, they're using the internet to find their information and see what's out there and see what fits what their needs are. So you are like 43% of everyone else. Good. So the other thing that's really important is also yard signs. People still drive by. They still call their neighbors when they see I, something. I look for them. Absolutely. So these are the, the main parts that we're going to focus on. So the next we have is finding our local buyers, right? So not all of our buyers are just from this area. We have both local buyers and national buyers, right? The national mm -hmm. people are people who are moving into our area who love Richmond. They want to stay here. They want to move here. They want to have jobs here. They're looking elsewhere. But we do have local people. So we talked about just a second ago one of the big ways that we get local people in, which is yard signs. But there's some other things that we do to help target just our local market. Those would be open houses or boosting on Facebook so that people just in our area are looking. They're very targeted. We also, just with how we would market to somebody who is not in the area, 
using our social media, whether that's Realtor.com, whether that's using Facebook, whether that's using Zillow or Trulia, we want to make sure we have the most complete information out there so that we're not only just hitting the people who are in the area, but also the people who are outside of the area. I really want great coverage on the internet because I'm on it all the time and I think all the buyers are too. Yeah, and that's the whole thing is that people want the information when they're going to look for it. So if we don't have it out there, they'll never be able right. to find it. I agree. Yeah. So we want to reach 100% of the market. So 40% of our market is out of town. So that means that while we do really focus on that 60% that's in town, we can't just disregard that 40%. So often they're ready and able to buy. Oftentimes they've already sold their house, which makes them all really Because they're moving here yeah, and they really have to buy here. a house. I love the idea of having some relocation people coming in. That's exactly right. So we have an a very extensive exposure to a national market. Through ERA, we have not only just the local market, but we open up to all ERA professionals. So when you list with us, you get to have the exposure of everyone that's in the entire marketplace. And that's not just national, it's also international. So that exposure really does help capture that 40% that's not from the local market. So I like that. I want to stop here. Are there any questions I can address at this point? Well, I like the fact that you're looking locally, but I also like the fact that you're really kind of focused and thinking about that there are people moving in who have to buy a house and how you're going to sort of pull in all of those resources to help my house really shine for them. That's good. Yeah. You know, <coughs> as you can see here in this part wow. of our presentation. That's a lot of websites. <laughs> Gosh, it that's, goes everywhere, doesn't that's it? That's exactly right. And you can see it's kind of a flow chart here, mm -hmm. right? You know, we start here with the MLS, which is really our bread and butter. That's where all the information goes. And from there, we can disseminate and we can kind of target it outside of that. But we go from the MLS to our Napier ERA website. And this Napier ERA web website is as robust as the MLS. And then from there, we just push it out to this entire list of everyone else. So if we're not hitting them with a yard sign, we're getting them either realtor.com, Trulia, the ERA website, the Zap Realty, and then all the other well, you know what I Agencies. like about this? I see a lot of different websites with other companies. That means that you're not marketing just to your company, but it's getting out to every agent who happens to be working for another company in our metropolitan area. So they're all actually kind of working for you on my behalf. They are, and it's not just locally. There's Coldwell Banker and Remax and Century 21 all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it is. It's not just going to us. It would be limiting if we just used our own agents. So, for example, when I'm talking about trying to hit those markets and really trying to push those markets, we like to enhance our exposure. And one of the good ways we do that is Realtor.com. We with Napier ERA have a higher presence within the Realtor.com, meaning oh, really? we have a more in-depth website and a more in-depth um, pulling of information. Mm -hmm. So when somebody's out there looking, they're not just going to get the, the general facts, meaning not just what they have on the tax records, but then they'll have the full MLS listing. Oh, I like so they'll that. have the comments, they'll have the pictures, they'll have the information about me as your agent. So when they are looking at something, they're not just looking at a standalone piece. They're looking at something that's very deep and that has the right person that they can contact to get more information. So can you go into that and put in even more information that you might put in the multiple listing? So what we do is we use the MLS to pull the broad pieces of information and then from there if we wanted to target it differently we could. Oh, that's good. I like yeah. that. But we, we really utilize um, the fact that we have an enhanced relationship with Realtor.com to pull the full MLS information. Not all companies do that in this area. Okay. So that's something that's, that's good. different and special that I we like do that. with ours. Yeah, I like that. So in that enhancing, obviously we get the full info, we get the, the full pictures, and so this just kind of gives you two examples of the difference, right? So it doesn't just say, if you want more information, just contact some random person. You know, it actually has me attached to it, because who better to speak for your property than the person mm -hmm. represented I like that. As opposed to just somebody who's knowledgeable to the area. So when you're looking for a house, you already said that you went to the website. I did. I went, I went to Zillow. You really? All my friends go there, and I've been kind of checking out my neighborhood and looking at the history of everything on Zillow because I want to kind of get an idea of what was going on. 
And that's such a good way to gain information, not only about a specific property, but also just the area in general. Mm -hmm. Another bonus that we have is that the Napier website, the Napier webpage, is a really robust page. It's a powerful page that, just like the Realtor.com, we've, we've turned on the enhanced functionality of it. So again, it's not just basic stats. It really has more information, more in depth, and the ability to really contact people. And that's the way that I feel that we can kind of hit that, both that local and that um, national market. Okay, good. So I like to call this all smart marketing, right? Being smart about the eyeballs that are on there and trying to get the information to them as succinctly and clearly as possible. And so that really is a key. So here's just kind of an example of what we use. You know, we do high quality online listing tours, we do circle picks, we do professional photography, and we do a lot of the pieces that's not just the same as walking in and taking a picture with a cell phone. It's not that would be great. I've seen some yeah. terrible photographs out there. <laughs> and that doesn't sell many houses. Yeah. Um, so Let's say you love all the marketing, you love everything that's going on, but we're not selling, right? So as a Napier ERA agent, we have relationships with relocation companies. For example, Cardis. This is one of the relocation companies that we work with. And so that is another way that we can bring buyers eyeballs to your listing. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so we cannot guarantee that where somebody in the Cardis network is going to move to Richmond, Virginia, but what we can guarantee is that if there is somebody looking in Richmond, Virginia, that we can get their eyeballs mm -hmm. to you. And we work on that relationship pretty ardently so that we can maintain that and keep our national okay. averages up. So here is just uh, information about a home protection plan. You know, I've been thinking about that because my house is a little bit older mm -hmm. and I know my air conditioner is old, I know my furnace is old, and I know that my stove is kind of old. And I had heard my friends talking about getting things repaired when they broke. So I kind of like the idea of having some protection set in because, you know, it, it would cost me a lot if I had to replace like an air conditioner. Well, and the great thing is with a home protection plan is that you do pay for it at closing. So that's you can awesome. have something that's in place while you're houses on the market so if the air conditioner goes or the you know faucet starts leaking or what have you you can have that address during that time and then you can also say that that warranty goes along with the sale of your house so both you get the protection and your buyer gets the protection. So does it cover absolutely everything and does it cost me anything extra to have my air conditioner my heat covered? So it does not cover absolutely everything. Okay. Um, but it does but cover, a lot. It does cover most things. And as a um, seller, you pay uh, additional fee to have your heating and cooling, your HVAC cost mm -hmm. covered. Not your boiler, but your heat pump covered. Um, that is an additional charge, which is not very much. Okay. Um, but the buyer receives all of that in one package. I would feel very good about that because I do know that my systems are kind of old. So that, a, I would be very receptive. Yeah, it's a really good opportunity. And statistically, it shows that those who offer that sort of protection can receive some benefit for that. Okay. Does it cover me while my house is listed? Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Absolutely. I like that. And it pays for it at closing, so it's not an out-of-pocket right. expense. Okay, I like that. So the next part of my presentation is when we start going into selling your property and attracting our buyers. So this is when um, a house and a seller apply for an ERA program. And it's as if you're saying it's a buyout. If you're interested, we can meet further with my manager to take the next steps. Is that something that you might be thinking of maybe. if the house isn't selling? Yeah, maybe. It's but, a but you know what? I really feel good about you. I think that you're going to probably sell it, and we're going to price it, and we're going to get it ready, because I do want to sell my house. I'm not going to play games with it. That is the best approach. We will go in just a minute and look at kind of the stats for your area, and that's really where we need to price in. So if people have been selling in your area, we'll use their numbers and their statistics to help see what your location so and your condition how it works. That's exactly how that works. So we base your value on what other people in your area have already paid for. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that's how Because I, I have been watching. I have a good idea about my neighborhood. Excellent. And we're going to get to a point where we can really discuss that even further. 
So let's stop here and let me just take a second and preview your phone. Okay. And we did that. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> and now we're moving on to the next place. Look at my hair sticking up. <laughs> so we previewed, and this this is when I also talk about, you know, what I offer, meaning that I talk about the places where I can see some improvement or some value add. And we did that. We all walked all around, and Lee has a magnificent house. I don't see and any trouble. Didn't hurt my feelings at all. I didn't. I am very nice about that. So. Lee, thanks so much for sitting back down with me at the kitchen Thank table. You. Yeah, it's good to walk around. You, you kind of opened my eyes to some things. Excellent. So since I've now walked around and we've talked and we've interacted, I can have a better ability to kind of determine your market value. And from that, I'm going to use these four criteria. right? We have a comparative market analysis. We have a pricing market grid. And then we have an absorption rate tool and a home appraisal. Now, I'll just tell you off the bat, the home appraisal is a very important step and it's one that is at the end of our process. So even if we have you and the person who would like to purchase your home agreeing, we still have the last step if they're getting financing to have it appraised. Unless the terms, as we talked about earlier, terms are, are okay. important. So I don't have to pay for the appraisal. So the um, if the person who is um, doing the funding, so the person who is buying the house is the one that is doing the oh. appraisal. So if I did it myself as the seller, you mean that the buyer couldn't use my appraisal? They do not. It, it oh. goes with the person who is getting the funding. Now, every now and then you'll have somebody who is not getting funding through somebody else. Like they pay cash like or they something? They pay cash, but they'd still like an appraisal to make sure that the value is fair, and that would be something that they would pay for as well. Oh, so that's good. Not so I don't have to really worry about it. You don't have to worry much. about it, other than the fact that it's a step that has to be taken. Okay. That's at the end of the process. The beginning of the process starts with what we call a CMA, which is a comparative market analysis. That's exactly what I was just telling you about. We look in your specific area, your neighborhood, things that are in a half mile to two miles around you that says they have gone on the market and they have sold and what did that sell for? And that's what we use to determine your value okay. because it's called a like and like. So for example, if somebody next door to you had six bedrooms and you only have four bedrooms, I could not use those as a like-like comparison, even though you know, they're right next that door. That happens in my neighborhood a lot. And a lot of my neighbors say, well, I sell my house for this. And I know their house is not like mine. That's exactly and, and right. And I thought, mm, I'm not so sure about that. So that's good to know how that works. Yeah, and that's where we also take into um, consideration those things that I was talking to you about, about um, location as well as statistics, right? That four bedroom versus six bedrooms. 3,000 square feet versus 1,500 square feet. Just because you're in the same neighborhood doesn't mean that you're the exact same product. That's true. Well, my neighborhood particularly, we're all very different. So, and this is where we kind of go into the fine details of that. Then the next thing I do is we take that a bit further, and this is what we call a pricing analysis grid. And what I really like to think about this is really more for my Excel, my analyticals that it shows you pictorially what we're talking about. So it almost even graphs where everyone oh, is. I would like that. I so we, I work with these in tandem. Once we've pulled the ones that are the closest in, in statistics, then we graph those and see where they fall. So it's easier to kind of so see instead of just a lot of numbers. That's okay, exactly like right. That. So then we have this, this next step. Um, and this is where I help you determine what you can expect the market to bring you and what timing you can expect from that. So for example, if everything in your neighborhood is staying on the market for three weeks, right? It's three weeks, it takes three weeks to get a contract in and for the buyer and the seller to agree and to then what we call pinned in the system. That means that nobody else could be looking at your house mm -hmm. and that's when you stop having an active listing and you start working to the next steps. We'll get into those next steps, but that's where you do things like inspections, and the appraisal would also be a part of that towards the end of it. But this is where I like to talk about where we analyze this information to get to the next step. So I would not tell you if everything is in, in your neighborhood selling in three weeks that we would sell in one week. 
because statistically it doesn't oh, show that. So you're kind of looking for a balance between what's gone in the past and comparing it to what is my likely pathway. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, and then our final piece that we talked about just a second ago is that appraisal. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the four pieces when we determine market value. Okay. Does that make sense to you? It makes a lot of sense. Are there questions that I can answer that aren't clear now? Well, I'd like to have a number. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to get to that in just a second. So after we've done all of the other pieces, right? You and I have agreed we have marketed it to both our local and our national, and really, frankly, international. And we've come up with a price that we feel is reasonable and fair. Then we want to talk about all the pieces that take us to get to a successful closing. As you can tell, this house is made up by wow, many different of, pieces. There's a lot of stuff that happens, isn't it? They're, it's complicated. It is complicated, and that's why I'm here, to help that mm -hmm. not be so complicated. And sometimes we forget what step two and three is when we're on step one or step six, but it's important that we go through the process. Okay. So here's what I'm guaranteeing to you, that I will give you excellent service. I like that. And I would expect that based on how you're doing this. Absolutely. And it's important that you know that, and that is my guarantee to you. So I like to talk about my three bullet points here. Um, Listing your home with us is risk-free, right? Mm -hmm. You make the decision. We work as a team to make it happen. What if I'm not happy with you? Please open the conversation with us. I will. I will do everything I can to make you happy. The reality is, is that we both still have to agree. Okay. Right? Because I've heard that some people have to list their house for six months and they can't get out of the listing if they're unhappy with the agent. And I wondered if you have if you follow that policy. Um, I do not follow that policy. That's really good to know. It's like I would expect it to go well with you, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. And I would always ask that we would be allowed to have a conversation so that I can explain reasonings behind or the processes. That sounds and so fair. that I can hear also your feedback right. and your input because your input is as important. Because I'm unhappy for some reason. That is exactly right. And I don't want you to be unhappy but I also want you to be realistic and so part of my goal is to help you understand what's realistic for what's happening in our market right now because that's really the point right it's not just what I want or what you want it's what somebody is willing to do in our market it's that pesky this buyer exact coming moment. in my door <laughs> and we can't do anything about a pesky buyer yeah. but what we can do is be realistic for what properties just like yours are doing right now in our market we can't expect your house to be outside of the range of what everything else mm -hmm. that is similar is doing whether that's how many showings it's having per week or how um, long it stays on the market or even pricing right I can't price you a hundred thousand more than the house next to you that has the same number of bedrooms right, right. And the same location like and it. the same square footage you would, but if they're not selling for what they're listed at, then I cannot promise, yeah, well, I can't like guarantee that. Yeah. that I can do that for you. So the other thing I like to say that our performance is guaranteed. If you're not happy, open the conversation. Tell me you're not so that I can address it. If we cannot come to a resolution, then I cannot ask you to stay because okay. we are not on the same page. Okay, that's fair enough. And then my last portion is that because of everything that I've laid out, our results have earned us a 98% client satisfaction rating. Well, that's very reassuring to hear. I like 98%. It's nice. Isn't I it? like being A+. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> so I've gone through my whole listing spiel at this point. Is there anything that I can address that I have not? Well, you know, I, I'm still interested in the number mm -hmm. because I want to know what my house would sell for. And I have a number in mind, and I'm wondering where kind of you are on that. So, you know, my neighbors have sell, have sell, you know, they've sold kind of like $295, $310, and, and, you know, I think they're pretty much like me. I've been in their houses. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, we're pretty comparable. Are you thinking higher or lower or kind of like right around there? Yeah, so you have four bedrooms, mm -hmm. and they all have six bedrooms. That's a lot more. Yeah. yeah. So I would say that we're going to have to decrease 
your thought processes for the fact that there are two extra bedrooms. But are you talking about the one two doors down that sold just three weeks ago? Well, they did go for 310 and they did have six bedrooms. I mean, I do have to say that, although I have a study mm -hmm. in an office, but it's not really a bedroom. So when we're looking at values, we have to take, again, that like and like comparison. So they sold for 310. Now, I looked at the pictures online, and it looked like your kitchen and your bathrooms have been done a little bit more than theirs are. Oh, okay. That's good. And I would agree. You know, I think we, we have granite, and they didn't have granite, mm -hmm. and we have stainless appliances, and they didn't. So they went for 310, six bedrooms, two doors down, not as nice condition. And then the other one that is around the corner, you said? Mm -hmm. So that one had four bedrooms, right? Mm -hmm. And that one you said went for what? Well, they told me it went for 300000 but that's just kind of scuttlebutt and neighborhood gossip. Okay. So I looked, and when I did your CMA, it looked as if they actually went for um, two ninety, okay, with five thousand dollars in closing costs. Ooh, yeah. So that means that's fifteen thousand less. So they were four bedrooms, just like yours, but they were not as updated. Okay. So what we're going to do is try to find a, a, a middle ground there. We're going to close. We're going to be closer to the four bedrooms mm -hmm. because that's the same, but their condition wasn't as high. So we're going to raise you up a little bit because your kitchen and bathrooms are, okay. are in a better condition. Yeah, and they were, and they are. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we're not going to be able to go as high as the six bedroom one that you know is bigger, has more square footage, and the condition is similar. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So what are you thinking? So I um. Going back to our media and how we market things, right now, as you said, most people start on the internet. That's where they start. And the internet has some very specific points that people use. 250, 275, 300, 325. Mm -hmm. So I would personally aim to go under three so that we can hit all of those people to keep in line, but knowing that the closest comp you have is 15000 less than that. Mm -hmm. So I would aim to hit those people who are looking up to 300000 and know that we may need to back it down to bring it more in line with that one that went 15000 under. So how long would I have to wait before we made that decision? Um, there's not a set answer. Usually two to four weeks, depending on how many people we have coming in and out of the house. If we have lots of people coming in and nobody's giving you an offer, that is telling you that you are too high. Okay. So are you thinking maybe three hundred thousand to start? I would do three hundred or just below two ninety nine, okay. two ninety five, you know, somewhere okay. in that, just so that it's just that little bit of off, and then stick there. Two weeks. See what okay. happens. Well, I think I would like to try 300 because I have to put a lot of work in my house. And mm -hmm. I think it shows very nicely. And I think it shows better than the one that had the other four bedrooms. And when I look in Zillow, I know that I kind of look up to 300 or 325 or 350. So I kind of like that round number. Mm -hmm. So I think I'd like to give it a shot at that. But I'm willing to listen and pay attention to what you, you suggest if we don't get something pretty quickly. That sounds great. So shall we get started? I think it sounds good. I'm, I'm real happy. I'm happy I called you. And yep, I'm glad to start signing. Excellent. Let me get our documents together. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.